In this session, I'm going to show a few examples where one of the side gives an exchange sacrifice for positional considerations. Now, talking about exchange sacrifice, we give a rook for bishop or knight. And why do we do that? We know that rook is more powerful than minor pieces, bishop and knight. And sometimes we still go ahead and give an exchange sacrifice. Now, let me explain what are the different situations when we can give exchange sacrifice. One common reason to give an exchange sacrifice is to gain an attack on the opponent king by destroying the piece which is defending the king or breaking up his pawn structure near the king. So this is one common reason why we give exchange sacrifice. The other reasons which are not very common is to gain control of one particular color. For example, if you remove one particular bishop for the opponent, so you give exchange sacrifice to also gain control of one particular color. So you give the rook for a bishop which gives you control over that particular color which the bishop was controlling. For example, you gain control over the light squares or the dark squares along with a pass pawn, then usually that is a good enough reason to give an exchange sacrifice. Now let's start with an example which was played between Vishwanathan Anand and Banbili in 2006. So this is from Sicilian Sveshnikov or in Indian terms we call the Sicilian Sveshnikov as Sicilian Pelican. So here Vanvili is an expert with black in Sicilian uh, Sveshnikov variation. He played bishop c6. Now the idea is bishop into d5 followed by rook into b4. So here uh, it looks like the b4 pawn cannot be defended appropriately by white because you don't have queen d2 or queen d4 and the rook a1 or f1 cannot defend the pawn on b4. So what should white do here? If white is happy with equality, he doesn't have to do much here, but white wants more than equality. So Anand came up with an exchange sacrifice, which is rook a4. Now that we know the topic we are discussing, it's easier to find this move, but when you are playing in a tournament game with all the associated pressure and tension, it's not easy to, even if you see such an idea, it won't be easy to play this move. So what he does with rook a4. If black plays bishop d5, queen d5, the pawn on b4 is alive and it's simply a pass pawn. You will get, let's say, b5 and then uh, the pawn will create, be a big nuisance for black. So black has to accept the exchange sacrifice. Now let's see, try to understand what white gained by giving up the exchange. The first important thing is the knight on d5. It cannot be removed anymore by any of the black pieces. His queen or bishop cannot do anything. Even if he manages to get rook into d5, he will, we will still gain the exchange back. So the knight d5 is a monster. The bishop g5 is a bad bishop because of the pawns e5 and d6. And the bishop g5 has really no target to attack. Ideally, if the bishop manages to reach the square d4, then it would make more sense to have that bishop because it will attack the pawn on f2, create some pressure against the white king and also contain the pass b pawn. But with bishop on g5, it's really doing nothing other than aiming in an empty diagonal. So what should white ideally try to do here, achieve here? So probably like bishop c4 and then roll the pawn b5, b6 with the knight support and then the bishop can be held together with pawn on b3. And what happens to the rook? Maybe we can hope to get rook d1, rook d3, rook f3, have some pressure on the f7 pawn. Now we can see that black really has no counterplay. The rook on f8, it's very difficult to bring it into the game. So is the rook on b8. The c8 file is not available. So let's see what happened. Black played queen e8. After queen e8, rook of e8, b5. Now the pawn is ready to go all the way to b7, b6, b7. Both the squares are under our control. And not only that, if he goes bishop d8, we have rook c1 and rook c6. So it's a very difficult position already for black. And we can at least agree that white has fantastic compensation for the exchange. So black plays f5. Now we can play ef5. Uh, he is giving the second pawn. 
basically